And Shaw. What do you say? Shaw. Yes. He always seemed to be rather inhuman by his writing, as though he wasn't a man at all, as he didn't feel the things most men felt, except, except uh, well, vanity. He felt vanity, and that was the whole of him. There was nothing more. I knew a lady who was secretary of the Labour Party in the University of London, and uh, she got gradually more and more towards communism, and at last became a communist and uh, married a Russian and went to live out there. And uh, in Stalin's purge, uh, this uh, Russian was taken away and uh, she never heard from him again or heard of him or didn't know what happened to him at all. And she was absolutely devoted to the man. And uh, she came to England to see if anybody could do anything to influence Stalin. And uh, she came to me among other people and I said, well, Shaw is persona greater in Russia. Perhaps he'll do something. And so we approached Shaw about it. And he wrote her a letter, which I saw, saying, My dear lady, you have no idea how comfortable Russian penal settlements are. I'm quite sure your husband is much happier there than he would be being nagged by you. I never spoke to the man again. I thought it one of the most horrible things I'd ever known done. Because the poor lady was utterly heartbroken. He, he was a very cruel man, very cruel. If his vanity was hurt, and his vanity was hurt in this, because it threatened his judgment of the Soviet Union. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's not obvious that, it, that his vanity was involved, but it was. Because it was a suggestion that perhaps he was wrong in praising the Soviet Union. And uh, that would be a suggestion that he wasn't as wise as he thought. And therefore the lady must be punished. <laughs> he, uh, by means of wit, he concealed the fact that he was silly. <laughs> wit is a wonderful thing for concealing. I mean, all his views about medicine, for instance, are totally silly. <laughs>